Hey, what's going on guys? Sean or Mustang09 and we're back in the garage working on the turbo Mustang. I promise, I promise. The next video you guys see will be a truck video. I know I have a lot of you guys wanting some truck content and I have some stuff I wanna talk about. So we'll make a truck video next, promise. But I'm excited about this because we had the first startup. If you didn't see that video, I'll link it somewhere. And uh, go check it out. It was super exciting times. But we had a, a situation where we weren't getting any uh, signal to the O2 sensor and we figured it out, or I figured it out uh, with the help of some friends. Uh, it turns out it was user error, my fault. I didn't have the Engage programmed correctly to read all of the stuff on the car. I had the wrong one selected and then there are some things in there called PIDs, PIDs, that you have to go in there and select so that when you data log, um, it tells the tuner what's data logging and stuff like that. So. Uh, super easy to do, um, and I just got a, the neighbor down the street, we did his 2018 uh, Mustang with the, the Whipple, and he sent me the PIDs that I needed, and that's what I used. So shout out to Mike, uh, thank you for that. And I did go ahead and underneath the car, I extended the O2 sensor. <clears throat> Squeeze under here. All right, this is gonna to be tough to show you guys, but I'll do my best. So this red wire here connects to the purple wire on the harness for the O2 on the passenger side, which is bank one. And it was super taut when we had it plugged in. So I just went ahead and extended it. It's soldered. I just need to heat shrink it and uh, put the harness back in the loom and then uh, electrical tape it up. But other than that, that was super simple. Uh, it stretched out really well. There's only one wire that I needed to extend, and that was the purple wire. So I'll clean that up tonight and get that all buttoned up. And then there's a brace, a support of some sort that goes right here in the car, and it goes across the way. So I need to, I'll put that back in. And then I'm also going to attempt to run the exhaust again. Um, running... <laughs> Uh, running the exhaust the first time around was pretty tough, um, but since we have a game plan on how we did it the first time, we should be able to replicate that, no problem. So I'll give that a shot tonight, um, and we need to mark where we're going to make our our tabs on the exhaust to where we can mount it, because right now there's tabs on there, but they line up to nothing. There's no way you can mount those up that we saw, so we'll have to cut those off and put new ones on or if we can reuse those ones re-weld those on in a different location so we can use them to mount the exhaust up but uh yeah so uh we need to do that let me uh yeah we'll work on this first and then we'll go to the top of the car and i have something cool to show you guys so we'll do that next Alrighty guys, I hope you can see it's tough for me to film under the car with it being so tight, but I went ahead and put electrical tape and put all the wires back in the loom. So this is all snugged back up. I put the mount back on this so it goes to the transmission. Um, it looks really good. Uh, this area got kind of tough, so it may look a little sloppy, but everything's covered, it works. 
and this is my driver's side O2 sensor plug, which I'm not running one right now. Um, currently, I only need to run one, the passenger side, which is bank one. So I have this one zip tied up out of the way. There was a little mount right here on the transmission. So I just used some zip ties and, and cleared that up out of the way. So that's, that's up. I didn't want to do it too snug so the wires didn't rip or anything. But all of this stuff is in, clipped in, and it looks good. So now we can move to the front of the car where I want to show you the cool stuff. Back into the front of the car. It's been a little while, which you guys have no clue of, but I had to clean this place up. It was filthy, metal shavings on the floor, dirt, dust, oil, coolant, all kinds of mess. So I've got the place cleaned up. It's actually pretty spotless right now. Tools are organized, don't mind my sweater. Um, oh, you weren't supposed to see that yet. Everything's cleaned. And I even went so far to clean the motor uh, just to get the dust off. But back to these. If you guys remember from shoot, six months ago, my good friends over at Headlight Revolution decided to sponsor me a set of headlights for my 2017 F250 and my 2013 Mustang GT. They're Morimoto XB LED headlights, and they're right here. As you can tell on the left, it's my factory headlight, and on my right is the Morimoto XB LED headlight, and it's blacked out, has a projector lens in it, and it looks dope. Here's a plug. I don't get any kickback from it. I just got the headlights. But if you use code Mustang, and I'll put a link in the description to their website, you can save 10% off, which is huge. That's awesome. So what I want to do tonight is install this one and compare it to the driver's side one that's already installed from the factory and let you guys see the difference. I've been itching to get these on. I've had them sit in a box over here for six months. I totally forgot what they look like until just the other day when I pulled them out to look at them again. But Let's get them installed. They're super simple. All you do is you plug in to the factory plugs with these two. This one comes with a connection that they sent that goes into your fuse box. It's an add a fuse. And then this little module here, you can use self tappers. Just like that, guys, they are in. Ooh, it looks good all blacked out. There's that one, and then the factory. So you can see it looks a little more shiny. There's more silver in there. This one's all blacked out, lots of LED lights. I think I have you guys pretty much in the middle. You can see both the lights, so I'm gonna go in, turn them on so you can see what they look like. Hopefully it's not blinding the camera because you're kind of right in eye shot, but we'll give it a try, we'll give it a shot. Oh yeah, they're super bright. So you can kind of tell, let me turn this one way, way down. You can see this one here, and then you see this light here. Alrighty guys, right now I have the hazards on, so this is just gonna replicate what a blinker would look like. On the factory one, as you can tell, it's a standard halogen bulb, just flashing back and forth in there, nothing fancy. Go to the XB LED, look at these LED lights. And then they're sequential as well, so that's super cool. There you have it guys, that's the Morimoto XB LED headlight for the 2013 to 2014 Mustang GT. Enough of that, let's talk about the car. So as I mentioned earlier in the video, we did get the O2 sensor reading. However, we're having another issue. Bank two, which is the driver's side bank, um, passenger is obviously bank one. Bank two, when we're running the car, the manifold over there is pretty cold. It's not getting super warm. Uh, so that's a cause for concern. We're not gonna start the car anymore until we figure out what the issue is. Uh, my tuner, Josh, came over looked at the car today, um, tried to make a revision to the tune, and then he pointed that out, that that side wasn't getting super hot, whereas the passenger side was warming up. Um, so uh, it's a little, little cause for concern. I'm hoping it's tune related and we can figure it out. I'm hoping it's not timing, because if it's timing, then all this turbo stuff has to come out, the harmonic balancer has to come off, and the front cover has to come off, and then the valve covers have to come off, and it's a lot of work. So I'm really hoping and praying it's not the timing. Um, so if you guys wish me luck, and if you have any insight as to why that side would be get, not be getting as hot, um, it's, I think it's spark related. I don't think it's fuel related because it's getting enough fuel. We pulled a plug um, and it smelled of fuel. Uh, so that gave us the insight to that it's getting enough fuel, maybe the spark's not going off. So we tried to, jump around it by undoing the MSD two-step. 
and then starting the car and maybe the MSD was interrupting it somehow, but that's not the case. We undid the two-step all the way and just plugged the injector straight up and so, or sorry, uh, plugged the spark plug straight up to the factory harness and it, that didn't cure it. So now we're kind of uh, at a standstill. Josh is going to call some of his tuner buddies and see what they say. And I'm doing some research and asking some friends and seeing what they say as well and hoping that we can get this thing figured out. Whew, it's stressful. Uh, it's coming towards the end. We have some stuff to button up. I still have to hook an AC line up. I need to plug the fans in and then we need to obviously run the exhaust. Um, so a lot of stuff to do still, not a lot. Uh, it's all straightforward stuff minus the exhaust. Uh, I think I mentioned that earlier about the tabs. We're gonna have to relocate the tabs on there so we have good mounting, solid mounting points, uh, which isn't too big of a deal because we have a welder. So we can make that happen, no big deal. Um, just gotta get some, our minds running together with each other to make that happen. Let's see, I think that's it. I think that's it for tonight. I appreciate you guys watching. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, the next video will be a truck video. So thank you so much for watching this one. Uh, make sure you hit subscribe if you're not already on this channel. If you're new, welcome. My name's Sean. I love my cars. Uh, hit subscribe. We hang out. We have a good time. Usually I'm in the garage with my buddies. Uh, tonight just happens to be a work week night. So they're at home and I'm in here slaving on my own. But no big deal. My car, I get to put in the hours because I get to enjoy it the most. But yeah, I've rambled long enough. I appreciate you guys watching. We'll catch you boys back here next time. Have a good night. Take it easy. Peace.